Well, I'm ashamed to say that it finally happened. I decided to bite the marketing bullet, and today, much to my chagrin, the White Claw Highball on Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, hi there, ho there, my name is Michael, I'm a bartender from the Kalamazoo area, and today on Mike's Hard Reviews, we're talking about White Claw Vodka and the White Claw Highball. Now, in my defense, I do not normally fall for marketing ploys. I would see something like this, touting some ridiculous distilling process that doesn't really make any sense and would ignore it. But I think there's actually something to be said about this product, at the very least, from a smart marketing perspective. So we're gonna talk about White Claw Vodka and their version of a vodka highball that a couple different people, including Jalen Little and the folks over at the Educated Barfly have been very eager to show off, actually. They must be paying people a lot of money. Hey there, folks, it's Mike from the editing room. Uh, I just pulled the clips here you just saw about uh, the Jalen Little and the Educated Barfly making the White Claw Highball. Neither of those people who were the two primary creators I saw who were like, you know, doing something with this product talked about the quality of the spirit. Um, and Jalen doesn't do voiceover, so that makes sense. But uh, Educated Barfly does, and they don't talk about the quality or the market necessity of the spirit uh, or its its overall quality, just what the cocktail is about. Um, and they don't they don't talk about the spirit, the base spirit at all. So if you, if you if you go watch that, you'll find out they don't talk about the vodka itself other than the copy on the bottle. So take it with a grain of salt, I guess. I don't know. I was not one of them. This is not a sponsored video. I want to say that right now. I did this of my own volition because I'm also going to see if I can debunk what this says. So for those of you who aren't aware, White Claw does not make spirits. Um, this is the first time that they've done this. Traditionally, they are a malt uh, sort of, uh, goodness, what would you call it? They're malt beverages, kind of like uh, Mike's Hard Lemonade, but with other fruit flavors. And just recently they started producing a vodka, which is a st pretty standard 40 proof vodka. The distinguishing factor being that it claims to be triple wave filtered. Now what that supposedly means is that part of the filtering distilling process for this product happens at a pressure equivalent to a 30 foot wave. That sounds like a shitty marketing gimmick to me and I don't believe it in the slightest. So here's what I did. I went to the store and I bought a comparable bottle of vodka at the same proof Smirnoff, something that everybody knows. And I also have a bottle of Pinnacle that's been sitting on this shelf for a minute. We are going to taste these A, B, C, and see if there is an actual noticeable difference between any of these. The whole point of vodka is that it is a neutral grain spirit. It should have no character, realistically. So if there is a noticeable difference, then maybe this deserves to exist. But frankly, that's not what I think they're going for. Before we dive into this, as I get my glasses and things ready, I wanna talk about exactly why I think they started doing this. I saw people talk about White Claw Vodka and their idea for a White Claw Highball. And I thought that seems a little silly. Why would they bother? White Claw isn't even good at doing what they do anymore. Carbonated malt beverages, I mean, truly also exists. And then countless other way better artisanal, I guess, quote unquote, um, beverage companies do the same thing that they do now better than they do hell, better than they did when they started. High Noon, for example, they make a very similar product to what White Claw produces, but using grain alcohol so that it tastes better. It's a better, they can do more with it. It tastes better. Shortly after I saw this come about, I saw an ad on YouTube for White Claw Vodka Sodas. Now, I took a picture on my phone. I don't think I have it anymore, actually, but uh, of, a, of like a stall at the market that had all the flavors in it and it was like cherry and mango and lemon, and I think grape, which was interesting. Um, and the thing is, White Claw makes a regular vodka, they also make flavored vodkas. I'm pretty sure they made this as a base for flavored vodkas so that they can make cheap, cost-effective vodka sodas without having to use a regular base spirit and they can instead substitute a flavored one. That's my thought, I don't know. I'm incredibly cynical when it comes to this stuff, I think, I think this is BS. I think it's just gonna taste the same as these two. I have no faith in this. Mostly because it should taste the same, you know? I, fuck it, whatever. Or rather, my right, your left, I'm gonna do uh, some Pinnacle, then Smirnoff, and then the White Claw. These are both fresh bottles of Smirnoff and White Claw. I haven't tasted these yet, actually. This is gonna be a genuine reaction here. 
to see exactly how different these are and if this is even worth, you know, what its use case says. Because it says, I think I saw some, some marketing somewhere that said it's the smoothest vodka ever or something like that. I, I don't fucking know. At White Claw, we're relentless in our passion to bring you unrivaled taste. Yeah, okay. I live on the same street as like a fraternity row. No, you don't, motherfuckers. You make cheap alcohol for frat boys to chug down. Let's just face it, that's fine. Just embrace it. Don't BS me, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna start with the pinnacle. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna nose them first, just to see if there's any discernible difference there. Smells like clean grain alcohol. Next, the Smirnoff. Smells like clean grain alcohol. <laughs> This bottle's been open for a long time. That might play a role in this because I imagine there's some good evaporated alcohol vapors in here that's producing a stronger smell, but they smell comparable. In fact, I see no discernible difference, at least in the way they present on the nose between the Pinnacle and the Smirnoff. Let's try the White Claw by itself. Hmm, hold on. I'm wondering if the White Claw's alcohol is like kind of muted. It's what it seems like to me. It reads all, it, I mean, it smells almost like it should taste like something. Like it should have a flavor to it. Like almost cucumber-y, the way like fresh cut cucumber smells when you first cut into it. That's what it kind of reads like to me and maybe like it's strength of presentation. Let's do an AB on taste. Yeah, that's vodka. Of course, sort of an oily mouthfeel from the pinnacle. It's, it's vodka. I mean, it, it shouldn't taste like anything. And frankly, it really doesn't. It reads like vodka. It reads like it would show strong if you were trying to cover it up with juices. It's not unsmooth either, actually. It's got kind of a nice experiential tingling, but it, it doesn't carry a strong bit, any bitterness or anything like that. It's just alcohol. Classic Smirnoff. You see that? Tastes different from the Pinnacle. The Pinnacle's more intense. This has, this has a sort of like more present sensational experience of alcohol, which is really all you're getting from vodka. This is a bit more subtle. It doesn't hit you as sharply. It's not as intense. It's nicer, frankly. Smirnoff is kind of the standard vodka you would use for, I think, most things. <laughs> Except like drinking neat, I suppose. Although maybe you do. Now finally, let's give this White Claw vodka a sip and see if they're full of shit or not. Okay, dead ass. That tastes like it, it isn't ingestible. Something tastes wrong, and I am going to give this a fighting chance and put it in a different glass in case this shot glass wasn't properly cleaned because it read like motor oil or like some kind of oily gro grossness. I don't know. Hold on, fighting chance. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this again. I think maybe I'm, I'm maybe I'm a little fucky on this. Um, but that, that didn't taste right. I'm not gonna lie to you. On the nose too, I knew, I knew something was like, this is different, something's not right here. I could tell. Um, we'll see, maybe, maybe it was just the glass though. No, no, now that I'm raising it to my face, no, it does smell kind of like, like tap water, minerally, uh, but not in like a pleasant, like natural way, in like an artificial way. Oh, Jesus. Ah, okay. No, it does actually taste like that. First of all, it doesn't read any smoother, I don't think. And that word is very subjective in the first place. But all of these have the same kind of experiential tingling that alcohol causes on your palate. This is not any smoother. I, th I, I can genuinely taste that it is a significantly lower quality product than both of these. And Pinnacle is like the pinnacle of bottom shelf. Ugh, I feel sick. It's just wrong. It's off. And this, that was a fresh bottle. I just cracked this. I I don't, I don't understand. This is, there's nothing floating in it. It's not old, it's not foggy or hazy. It's a fresh bottle. I don't, I don't understand. Something about the way it's presenting you know that like the smell you get on like dried oregano? If you like put it on like a slice of pizza? That's what this tastes like. But like if you were to like wash the, the plate you ate that off of and then drank the water. It's, it's gross. Cause like if I go back to the Smirnoff, 
That's truthfully neutral. It's alcohol. That's all it is. This tastes off. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> it's gross, dude. It's gross. Ugh. It's bad. It's really, it don't. Actually, it's super bad. And this is the reason why I wanted to do this episode. Because the thing you have to look out for is companies that make cheap quality products of one kind attempting to venture into other things. It will not work. They are out of their wheelhouse. They don't know what they're doing and they fucked it up. At roughly the same, if not exactly the same price point, at least in the state of Michigan, where I am, I went to a Megabev, these two bottles are the exact same size, the exact same price, and this is a thousand times better. Not to mention, if you're looking for a flavored vodka, you get significantly more choices with Smirnoff, and from personal experience, they're gonna be a lot better than what you would get out of White Claw, for obvious reasons. Not just because they're gonna flavor their vodka, which is a low quality product with low quality sweeteners, but because why the fuck would you reach for this when you can have this? This is a this is appalling, actually. I'm actually really offended by this. It's, ah, it's bad. It's bad. And you know what? Something makes sense now. Something about the White Claw Highball makes sense now. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna make one, and I'm going to see if the reason why they built the what the high the highball the way they did is because they knew how awful this tasted. We're gonna reset this and we're gonna make that highball. God, this is miserable. <laughs> the white claw, a white claw highball, the way that I saw it being made was sort of taking inspiration from like a Ricky, where you have whole pieces of or like a smash, uh, where you have whole pieces of citrus sort of muddled into it, and that becomes the base of your drink's flavor. And what puzzled me about it when I saw both Jalen and the folks from Educated Barfly make it was some of the weird ingredients. I mean, to start off, you have your White Claw vodka, which is apparently very gross on its own. And then of all things for a sweetener, agave nectar. I'm thinking this, this vodka has a really high, however they make it for whatever reason, has a very high mineral content, but it does not read pleasantly like a tequila would. So you use agave syrup instead of simple syrup to reinforce those flavors, add an agave twist to them, and make it read more like a cheap tequila. Which begs the question, why didn't you just take this out of production and make a tequila instead? Fucking make up your fucking minds. What do you want? Uh, aside from those two things, you're gonna need some club soda, uh, a lime, and then some salt, at least a little bit of salt um, for our modeling. Which, you know, even further makes me think this is meant to embrace some kind of minerality that I think is fucking disgusting. This tastes like cigarette butts. Um, and not like good quality cigarette butts. This is like Marlboros, but like re-rolled Marlboros or somebody's like reusing the filters. That's what this tastes like. Anyway, let's just make, let's make it. Let's make it. Uh, to start off, I'm gonna take this lime here. I'm gonna cut this uh, into some wedges. I'm gonna throw, eh, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a fighting chance. Maybe, maybe dressing this vodka up is the way to go. You know, maybe that's where it shines. So I'm gonna do a whole lime. We're just gonna throw that entire thing into our glass. Uh, so next up, we're gonna go ahead and do just a little sprinkle of uh, salt. I think sea salt is technically what's appropriate here, but a little bit of granulated salt won't hurt, uh, won't hurt it none. Uh, I have nowhere to put this. Uh, so I'll dust that off later. <laughs> um, next up, we need a uh, half an ounce of our agave syrup. Like I said, to give it a fighting chance, I went ahead and got like a nice organic one and it's brand new. I, I sincerely hope this doesn't come back to bite me in the ass. It's probably gonna come back to bite me in the ass. This purchase was probably a huge mistake. Anyway, woo! Half an ounce of agave syrup or agave nectar, technically. We're gonna go ahead and grab a muddler. So to get these a nice squeeze to express the juices and oils out of the peels. All right, good stuff. Uh, next up, we need uh, two ounces of, <sighs> two ounces of White Claw Vodka. I thought before I started making this video that I had beat my depression. I'm realizing that it really wasn't that easy, was it? 
I'm gonna take a bar spoon and give this a preliminary stir just to get that nectar and everything combined, get the salt off the bottom of the glass. And, and next up, we need to throw some ice in there to get our chilling process started. For this, for this size of glass, um, it's gonna be one cube, though for most, because this is like a 13 and a half ounce tumbler, technically, a regular Collins you could get away with one, one reasonably sized ice cube, correct? Now that we've got our ice in there, I'm gonna give this a quick stir to chill everything at the bottom. And then finally we top with soda water that I hope won't explode on me. Ah, fuck. Give that just a gentle up and down to get everything nice and combined. And that, ladies and gentlemen, goes ungarnished as a White Claw highball. Fuck me. <sighs> okay, so I know I'm really dour right now, but like, this is not promising. <laughs> We've got our station cleaned up. I've thrown a straw in here just to, you know, get this a full experience. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a taste. See how it goes. Oh. Okay. Shit. <laughs> That's not horrible. I. Okay. Wait. What? Hold on a second. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. But I'll eat my words a little bit. That doesn't suck. The vodka by itself had this really gross, like, oiliness to it, like, in flavor specifically, which a vodka should not have, objectively. <clears throat> and subjectively, I found it to be gross. But here, you don't get any of that. What I'm getting is the enhanced oils and juice of lime with, like, this really nice kind of, like, salted kick to it, and agave as a sweetener, which provides sort of a, an additional kind of minerality to it, kind of like what you would find in like a tequila. And, it, it, and it's not bad. It's, it's basically, this is what a lime white claw should taste like if lime white claws were actually made with real lime juice, which I think maybe they technically are, but not to this extent. This is, this is actually kind of good, wow. Hey folks, Mike post episode. This is really weird. I don't like it either. Um, I'm continuing to sip at this, and I said it doesn't completely suck, and that it kind of covers up the flavors. It does, sort of, but as I'm sort of sipping on it a little bit more and breaking it down a little bit better, you definitely still get some of the oily essence out of the White Claw vodka. It doesn't go away completely. It does a good job of making it seem almost like you want it to be there, but really, you don't. So, uh, don't make this with White Claw vodka. Make it with Smirnoff or a good... Tequila. Um, I'm probably not gonna finish it because I I know this is bog water whiskey whiskey excuse me vodka, but this this isn't this isn't bad. I hate to say that it isn't bad. Yeah, it's it's basically an alcoholic lime soda with like a nice mineral mineral like touch to it. It's. It's, it's not, it, I, I hate to admit it. It's, it's, it's pretty good, yeah. Um, wow. It sort of embraces the kind of minerality on the palate that this gives you and makes it work. But I do have a very simple, um, simple way you could make this exact drink, but better. Allow me to show you that. How about some decent Reposado tequila? Repeat this exact process with a decent Reposado tequila, and you will have a better experience. Also, use a better soda than I did, like Topo Chico. And at that point, oops, you've made a ranch water at that, basically at that point, sort of, kind of, not really. Uh, a ranch water doesn't have sweetener in it, it's a diet drink, but still, you've basically made a really, like, gussied up ranch water. And it will taste way better because tequila has actual flavor to it, and it has associated minerality and agave notes that complement everything that was put in here, including actual agave nectar. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I still think, even if this is a passable drink that I may actually end up finishing, or at the very least making with a better vodka or some hornitos, it doesn't suck, but it's clearly made, I think, to, to sort of mildly complement some of the really gross notes that come from this as a base, and then cover up everything else that they didn't know what to do with, i.e. the flavor of cheap alcohol. 
my mind half suspects there's isopropyl in here, by the way, like wound cleaning alcohol. For legal reasons, I want to state, this is not a bottle of isopropyl alcohol. White Claw as a company is not bottling isopropyl alcohol. I am simply making a comparison on the context of how isopropyl smells horrible and this tastes horrible. It is a joke for legal reasons. It is exclusively a joke. Do not sue me, White Claw. But yeah, um, this is this is where we're at. Um, I'm I'm at kind of a loss. I I don't know why they bothered. I don't know why they are there. This product exists. I don't know why they thought it had any reason to. They could have just made a vodka soda product line and not put the vodka on the shelves, and nobody would have known that this by itself is a garbage ass product that can be successfully covered up but you shouldn't have to cover up your spirit. I don't think this is worth anybody trying because you're gonna end up with a bottle of shit vodka that will probably not work anywhere else because even if I could cover it up here, I imagine it would come through in something like a screwdriver or uh, if you were to make a Cosmo with this, which you shouldn't, it's not the right vodka for that, but you could theoretically. There's just a lot of problems with this White Claw vodka as a product. And I do not think anyone out there should buy it because you can make this exact same thing with a nicer vodka, or at the very least a price equivalent, like common, good, old fashioned shelf style vodka like Smirnoff, and it will be better. Simply put, it will be better. This is a cheap cash grab uh, with some really stupid gimmicky copy written on it. And that dumbass three wave logo White Claw likes to use. Uh, for the attention of surfer boys or whatever the fuck. It's dumb. Don't buy this shit. If you're gonna buy a vodka, buy Pinnacle or Smirnoff. Unless you want to buy something really nice, you can sip on the rocks if you're an old man like me. And uh, then buy Dan Aykroyd's Crystal Skull because that is actually really, really well carefully distilled vodka. That has a use case, this does not. So thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed me, uh, enjoyed watching me tear da tear the fuck down this god awful piece of shit product. And uh, hopefully none of you out there bought this thinking you could use it in anything or that it was a decent product because it frankly isn't. Make the thing that they want you to make with their product with uh, a decent representative tequila instead. And uh, yeah, follow me on my socials. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. I like tearing shit down sometimes because. Every so often a company needs to get knocked down a peg. And if my voice gets heard at all on this subject, um, maybe they'll send me some free swag to make up for it. I don't know, White Claw, if you want, you want me to, you want to prove you can make a decent fucking product, make a better fucking version of this vodka and I will, I will try it again. See if you can impress me, motherfuckers, I dare you. <laughs> anyway, thanks again for watching, hope you enjoyed. Follow me on my socials, subscribe for more. I put out a video every single Friday, noon, on the dot. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode. Remember to drink responsibly, drink better quality. I'll see you around. Have a great day. Bye-bye.